Hello friends, I'm Sanjay. This is part 10 of the series in which I'm covering the interpretation of statutes and the principles of legislation as per the standard LLB syllabus. The playlist for this series is available on the Lawment YouTube channel. In the previous videos, we have discussed about the interpretation of statutes. In this part, we will talk about the principles of legislation. The first question to be answered is what are these principles of legislation? If you look at uh, different legal textbooks and uh, different university syllabi, some of them talk about uh, the principles of legislation in the context of why legislations are made, such as uh, Bentham's principle of uh, utility, John Rawls principles of justice, Nozick's entitlement theory of justice and the concepts of uh, individual interest and community interest. In uh, some other books and uh, syllabi, the principles of legislation are discussed in the context of how legislations are made. That is, the principles to be followed while making any legislation, such as uh, the principles of uh, legality, equality, proportionality, etc. Both of these categories are technically principles of legislation. In uh, one of my previous videos, I had explained the flow of how statutes are enacted, that is, how a bill becomes an act of the parliament. These are the principles that are mostly followed in the course of creation of statutes. Whereas these are the principles that explain why legislations are made in the first place. That is the need or the reasons for the legislation. And these principles are also followed during the actual process of enacting the statute. And uh, when we discuss these principles, you will also see that uh, these why principles have a lot of overlap with the how principles. And both of these categories are quite simple and interesting. While the topic operation of these principles upon legislation may be given separately in your syllabus, I will be talking about that aspect also when we discuss each of these principles. If you are watching this video to prepare for your LLB exams, you can choose to watch the topics which are included in your syllabus and the timestamps are in the description. If you are preparing for any competitive exams, then you should watch this video completely. One of the simplest principles that explains the reason behind uh, the why and the how of the creation of laws is uh, Bentham's principle of utility. Bentham was a proponent of the philosophy of utilitarianism and the principle of utility is a fundamental concept of this philosophy. Here the term utility has a broad meaning. It can mean happiness, convenience, benefit, pleasure or it can also be anything that prevents or minimizes harm, pain or unhappiness. The basic idea behind this principle is that uh, the actions or the policies of the people who make the law, that is the government, should be aimed at creating utility for the maximum number of people. Since it is uh, practically impossible to make uh, everybody happy at the same time, all the time, the actions or policies may lead to some inconvenience, pain or suffering or unhappiness to a smaller number of people. For example, the speed limit on a road may be fixed at uh, 60 km per hour. You may have a car that is uh, capable of comfortably cruising at 100 km per hour and you may be a very good driver. And you may also believe that your time is getting wasted because you are being forced to travel at a slower speed. That is, you could be traveling at 100 km per hour but you are being forced to travel only at 60 km per hour. But the reason for the speed limit is to ensure the safety and uh, therefore create utility for the maximum number of people. So a lesser number of people who may have uh, better cars or who may be better drivers may be inconvenienced due to the lower speed. Another example that I have experienced is uh, when a street near my house was converted into a one way. Since I had to frequently go to a shop on that street, it became an inconvenience for me because I had to go around and uh, drive almost an extra two kilometers to enter the street from the other side. Similarly, all the people who had offices or shops on that street were inconvenienced. But the one way created a utility for a much higher number of people who were using that street by reducing the traffic jams that used to happen on that street. John Rawls was uh, an American philosopher. He proposed a theory of justice in his uh, 1971 book. The theory of justice that he proposed is based on three underlying principles. The first one is the principle of equal liberty, which says that uh, every person has an equal right to the basic freedoms and liberties, such as freedom of speech, freedom of movement, freedom of religion, etc. But the exercise of one person's freedoms should not negatively affect 
another person's rights or freedoms for example if a person exercises his or her right to speech then such a speech should not infringe on another person's right to privacy or right to dignity you will notice that uh, the concept of fundamental rights in our constitution aligns with this principle the next one is the principle of a fair equality of opportunity which says that uh, every person should have equal opportunity to attain offices and positions irrespective of their economic or social status now opportunity is not just about jobs because jobs are often directly linked with educational qualifications here opportunity is referring to education as well you can see that uh, this principle also is uh, reflected in several fundamental and constitutional rights such as article 16 which assures equality of opportunity in matters of public employment article 291 which talks about equal opportunity of admission into educational institutions and also article 21a which guarantees the right to education the third principle is called the difference principle this principle acknowledges that there will be social and economic inequalities in the society but they should be arranged or balanced in such a way that the disadvantages are balanced to a certain extent with some advantages for example reservations such as uh, ews reservations or scholarships or other facilities to disadvantaged students make an attempt that uh, some of these disadvantages are balanced by these advantages robert nozick was uh, another american philosopher who also proposed a theory of justice which was in response to and uh, in some ways opposed to john rawls theory while uh, john rawls theory focused on how social and economic inequalities in the society could be addressed by redistributing some of those advantages or redistributing some of the wealth through legislation robert nozick gave more importance to individual rights and minimal government interference robert nozick's theory also has three underlying principles to explain how these principles work you can imagine this scenario once upon a time a fisherman went fishing in the sea and he got caught in a storm that storm blew his boat completely off course and when the storm ended he saw that he was near an island when he went onto the island he saw that it was completely uninhabited and the island had some uh, fruit trees there was also a source of fresh water so the fisherman liked this place very much and uh, he decided to stake his claim onto this island and he built a house there now he had become the owner of an island that previously had no owners after uh, living on that island for many years he decided to sell the island and retire onto the mainland the buyer paid the agreed price and took over the island and the house and uh, started living there so the previous owner that is the fisherman had exercised his right to sell the property and the new owner lawfully acquired it after some time some pirates happened to come that way they landed on the island they killed the new owner and took over that island here the pirates had unlawfully and unjustly acquired the island from the new owner the government got to know about what had happened on the island so they sent uh, some navy ships to capture or kill the pirates the navy defeated the pirates and captured that island but uh, since the new owner of the island had already been killed by the pirates there were no claimants to that land so the government decided to divide the land on that island among some poor fishermen so that they could build their houses and live there what the government had done was to confiscate the property that had been unjustly acquired by the pirates and redistributed it within the society if we now look at robert nozick's principles when the fisherman originally acquired the island he did so without violating anybody else's rights because the island did not have any owners if uh, no rights are being violated then the government should not interfere in the exercise of individual rights and freedoms when he sold the island to the new owner he was exercising his right to transfer if the buyer had cheated him then the government should intervene to uphold justice and return the land to the fisherman on the other hand if the seller and the buyer are exercising their rights and the transfer is lawful then the government should not interfere when uh, the pirates took over the land they committed an injustice 
that is they acquired or transferred the property unjustly here the government should intervene to rectify the situation and either return the island to the rightful owners or redistribute it within the society nozick's view was that uh, the government and laws should have minimal role to play in people's lives and should only ensure that the acquisition and transfer of property are done in a just manner and the government should intervene only if rectification is required what nozick was opposed to was redistributive justice or attempts to achieve social outcomes through legislation for example in india in the early 1960s the government started passing land ceiling legislations and land reforms were uh, conducted to limit land holdings and redistribute the land this would have been against nozick's principles because if the land owner had acquired or inherited the land lawfully then the government was interfering in his individual rights and trying to achieve some social outcomes by making such laws but uh, these land ceiling and land reforms would align with john rawls uh, principles because the government was attempting to redistribute the land and achieve some social outcomes another important principle of legislation is uh, the principle of balancing between individual interest and community interest this is not a principle that is attributed to any single philosopher or legal theorist this is a principle that has evolved from the discussions around the nature of justice governance and from social contract theories now what are these individual interests well these are individual rights and freedoms such as privacy speech movement property rights etc what are community interests these are aspects that are important for the community or the country as a whole such as uh, social welfare national security and the common goods such as public health this principle says that uh, when the legislature is making laws they should balance between individual interests and community interests in some situations individual freedoms may take precedence in uh, many other situations community interests may take precedence where individuals have to sacrifice their uh, personal rights or interests for the greater good of the society a good example of this is the right to own firearms countries which uh, prioritize individual interests typically allow a greater degree of freedom to own firearms in many places in the united states you can just walk into a shop and buy on the other hand countries like india which prioritize community interests typically place significant restrictions because the idea is that indiscriminate uh, permissions can lead to an increased level of uh, danger in the society as a whole so there are severe restrictions on owning firearms as i mentioned this principle of uh, balancing between individual interest and community interests evolved from several theories the first one is the theory of social contract which was supported by philosophers like uh, thomas hobbes or uh, john locke this theory of uh, social contract says that when people are uh, a part of a society such as a country or a state then there is a social contract whereby people surrender some of their individual freedoms for the benefits that they are getting by living in a society then there is uh, the theory of uh, utilitarianism which includes bentham's principle of utility which says that while making laws the greater utility of the greater number of people should be considered which may result in the rights of a smaller number of people being sacrificed and then there are uh, concepts like uh, liberalism or uh, communitarianism while liberals give more importance to individual rights communitarians give more importance to community values and benefits and uh, the lawmakers have to balance between these two viewpoints i hope uh, this concept of individual interest and community interest is clear if you have any questions please post a comment when you have some time just google about the lost and found system in japan and you will find some fascinating facts and statistics a study that was done by the university of michigan apparently showed that while only about 10% of the lost wallets are eventually recovered by their owners in new york up to 80% are recovered by the people in japan i did some rough calculations that if 100 wallets are lost around 7 would have been unrecoverable or destroyed around 8 are still lying under a bench or in the grass or stuck somewhere and not yet recovered so of the 100 lost wallets perhaps only 85 were actually recovered and of these 80 were returned this is the 80% that the study has arrived at 
If 80 were returned out of the 85, then that would mean that 94% of the people in Japan are very honest. Why is this so? It is not because of uh, some special laws in Japan. Their laws about lost property are similar to many other countries. This honesty is also not because of any reward or recognitions. It is only because the people in Japan are taught, right from the time they are kids, that it is not okay to keep anything that is not yours. Especially if you know that it has been lost by someone else. Apparently, even small children are taught to go to the lost and found office and return even small denomination coins that they find anywhere. What is driving people's behavior is their own moral values, their own sense of right and wrong that they learned from their society. So morals are not formally written anywhere. And usually there is no punishment if you choose to do something that is not morally right. Laws on the other hand are written rules and regulations and often they have a penalty or a punishment for non-compliance. You follow morals because you want to. You follow the law because you have to. Moral behavior is driven from inside and compliance with laws is driven from outside. So, these are the differences between morals and legislations. And if the government wants to strictly enforce a moral behavior, then they should enact a legislation to do so. Before we move on, quickly read through this table comparing the key differences between morals and laws. Morals are internal, they are based on individual values and beliefs. Laws are external, these are written rules enacted by the government. Morals are focused on the concept of right and wrong and they may be influenced by factors like uh, culture, religion, etc. Because what is morally wrong in one culture may be acceptable in other cultures. On the other hand, laws focus on preventing harm, promoting uh, justice and fairness and maintaining order in the society. There is no formal enforcement of morals, whereas laws are enforced through fines and punishments. Morals are broad principles and guidelines that cover behavior whereas laws are clear rules that cover specific actions. Morals are subjective since they can differ between individuals, whereas laws are objective because they apply equally on every person in the jurisdiction. Morals may change organically without any formal record, whereas laws change only by way of amendments or through new legislations. So there are formal records on when, how and why laws were changed. Morals are like uh, always telling the truth, always keeping promises and laws cover aspects like not stealing, not harming others and respecting contracts. Laws are usually made based on the prevailing morals of the society at that time. For example, when the society realized that uh, child marriage is morally wrong, then laws were passed to make it a crime. Morals are often extended above the law. And individuals may choose to have personal ethical standards or moral standards that go beyond what is a legal requirement. For example, when the country was under lockdown and the law required businesses to continue paying salaries to their full-time employees, some businesses decided to pay even casual and contract staff also. So they went above and beyond what was required by the law, just because they felt it was morally right, even though it was not a legal requirement. So that is the difference between morals and laws. Till now, we looked at the principles of legislation that covered why laws are made. Now let us look at the principles that are connected with how laws should be made. These are also very simple and easy to understand. For example, the first principle is the principle of legality, which means that the laws themselves should be legal. For example, the constitution grants some powers to the government and also sets some limits which means that the laws should not exceed those powers and must be within the limits set by the constitution. Equality, which means that uh, the laws should apply equally to all citizens without uh, discrimination on any grounds such as uh, race, gender, religion or social status. Proportionality, which means that uh, the consequences of uh, contravening or breaking any laws should be proportional to the severity of the offence. Very severe punishments for uh, small offences or for offences committed uh, unintentionally are not proportional. Public good, which means that the legislation should aim to promote public interest, welfare and security 
while balancing individual rights with the collective good of the society separation of powers this principle ensures that the legislative the executive and the judicial powers are distinct and separate and provide a level of checks and balances on each other to prevent abuse of power by any one branch transparency and accountability which means that the process of making laws should be open and transparent and the law makers themselves should be accountable to the public for their own actions and decisions principle of a due process which means that uh, the laws must guarantee a proper process and fair procedures for determining rights such as uh, the right to a fair trial the right to be heard the right to appeal clarity and predictability which means that uh, the laws should be written clearly and precisely so that people can understand their rights and obligations this uh, predictability allows individuals and businesses to plan their actions accordingly and any ambiguity or doubts in the laws should be interpreted in favor of the accused or in favor of the defendant human rights protection which means that uh, the legislation should protect and promote human rights ensuring that uh, the laws do not infringe on the fundamental freedoms and rights which are recognized by national and international law and uh, participation which means that the process of law making should allow for the participation of those affected by the laws which means that the process of uh, law making should allow for the participation by the citizens and it should also provide avenues for public input and feedback you will see that all of these principles are common sense and many of these principles such as uh, legality equality separation of powers due process human rights protection are built into the supreme rule book of the country itself that is they are built into the constitution and uh, with that we have reached the end of this video if you have any questions or feedback post a comment below i will see you soon in another video on lawman's youtube channel take care and jai hind